What's up, Internet? Thanks for joining me today. Um, it's just me today. Mario can't join me because of reasons being that we are all locked down at home, as I'm sure many of you are as well. So, again, thank you for joining me. Um, today we have the guys from uh, Tunnel Vision Games joining us. Um, we're going to be playing their new game, Light Matter. Thanks for joining me, guys. So, when you... When you composed for this, you didn't know what it was going to look like. Did you have any influence over that, that like, end of things? Did you have, like, a say? Uh, how the game should look? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I actually helped uh, with uh, some of the level design also. Uh, oh, really? That's and awesome. But it was... Yeah, we, we, we are a small company, so, so we, we do a lot of stuff. Uh, and... And we all have uh, influence on on how the the game looks at the end here. Uh, we had a lot of stuff about uh, how should the game look, which mechanics should we use, and uh, how should that m match the story, and what should the story be. We didn't know that either at the at the start. <laughs> so um, yeah, and the work with the voice actor as well. Like uh, you did a lot of the recordings with David Bateson and like directing him and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So I haven't made it very far into the game. Is there more than one voice actor or is it just the the, the main scientist? Yeah, we, we have the the main guy, uh, the, the CEO, Virgil. And uh, Virgil, then there's uh, also a woman called Ellen. I see. Yeah, some a ah. scientist that is kind of working behind the scenes. Cool. And uh, yeah, we, we have David Basin, who is kind of a very... Um, popular voice actor in, in games he's been doing hitman for like more than 20 years now oh he's, and he's uh, the agent yes he's agent 47 awesome. <laughs> but uh, now he's virtual in our game as well That's and awesome. it's been super fun working with him because he's such a nice guy and he really enjoys games and he enjoys this type of game where he's really the dry dark humor is really yeah, yeah. appealing to him yeah i uh when I was playing through it yesterday, the, I think part of the reason it reminded me of Bioshock so much too is that it's like, you know, it's like the dystopian sort of thing, but it's also like there's the, the dark humor of like the scientist gone wrong. Exactly. Um, so did you do all the sound design as well? Like all the, you know, all these moving parts, all the button clicks, all the little stuff? Um, uh, yeah, I did. I did uh, all the sound and, and music for the game. So, do you do like a lot of foley work as well normally, or is it just usually composition? Uh, it's it's actually I'm I'm not normally doing uh, a lot of foley. Uh, so, it was fun uh, and, and <laughs> interesting to try. Uh, yeah, just making uh, walking sounds and uh, yeah, me and uh, and another colleague had to smash some stuff in a room also at, <laughs> at some point. So much fun. <laughs> Yeah, um, that was part of like the reason that I got that I started going to Pyramid in the first place was because I wanted like, you know, I I, I was like, oh, it, I, it never occurred to me that footsteps are made or like breaking, uh, you know, breaking bones with celery is made. Um, so I, I have a question in the chat here. Um, does making does developing the sounds and music easier or harder with a blank slate with that with no visual reference is that easier or harder for you or does it does it make it you know more difficult without being able to see the product mm, i think it's more difficult because you are restricted uh, creatively uh, with your creativity uh, when you have something to look at but i think it ends up matching the the thing better um, yeah and you would go back and forth like influencing each other so you would talk to the 3d artist and she would make some cool stuff and then you would say hey how should that sound and or sometimes the other way around as well mm. so we are a very small flat company where all of us kind of work on all aspects on the game mm -hmm. so I, I i think this is quite unique in the sense that oh like he could do audio but he could do all sorts of other things on the game as well and like together we could find the common voice or kind of the style of the game together right that's really cool um you don't hear that a lot i mean i mean a couple well i guess it depends on the situation like how early on in development you come into the game because mm -hmm. it's it's really interesting that like you never as as an audio person i never really think that visuals 
get influenced by the audio that much. But it's really cool to hear that, like, that is a possibility, I guess. Because um, <laughs> a lot of the time, it seems like the game is, you know, they have a vision. This is what the game's going to look like. Um, so when you guys were, you know, starting to think about, you know, in the, like, the production stages, did you, how did you come up with the ideas for the game? Was it just like, we want a light-based puzzle, or... <clears throat> Well, the story about this game goes uh, far, far back because it was actually a university project we did back in 2013. Oh. And uh, we had this idea of uh, making some kind of game based around lights and, and shadows. And uh, we happened to make uh, this game in like a, sem for a semester project. And then we went to a conference in, and won a prize for the most innovative game. And uh, that was really nice. And we thought, okay, um, we are actually studying this education because we like games and because we want to make games. So we said to ourselves, this is a golden opportunity and we wanted to, to make it into a full-fledged game because what we had was just a 10-minute uh, demo. Right. Uh, but we decided to form a company and uh, start working on this game like full-time. That's awesome. And uh, we've been working on it since 2016 and we just released it like a couple of months ago. So. It has been a big learning experience for all of us uh, because none of us have made games commercially before. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of game jam games and, and university projects, but nothing at this scale before. Yeah. So all of it we had to learn from from the basics and and like figuring out how and what we want to make. That's awesome. So on the on the audio side of this, what was the learning curve like for making some like you know, I. We like to call it going pro in the audio world, but every time you say so, you ask someone what it's like to go pro, they're like, I'm not a pro, I just make music, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was really nice because I, I ended the, the, edu, uh, the sound design education uh, in, was it 16 or 17? 16. Uh, and then I... I had a, I was an intern in Tunnel Vision Games, and so so it wasn't there wasn't a lot of pressure on me, so I could actually uh, try out a lot of stuff with uh, I, I we decided to use FMOD, and uh, I had a lot of time where I could uh, try just try out everything I wanted to try out before really starting making the game. So that was really nice. Yeah, you actually start out as a technical audio designer working with reverb zones and stuff like that. Yeah. So you implement your own systems inside Unity and you designed and, and composed the, the audio and the music and all mm. that. That's awesome. That's really cool that you get like not only the design but also the programming. It's not, it's, uh, I don't know if unfortunate is the word, but it's definitely uncommon. Ah, oh, crap. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> um, is def it seems uncommon, at least from, from the perspective of someone who teaches the sound design stuff, for that to be as common, like, uh, you know, as, as uh, it doesn't happen as much. Um, no. Did you, what what made you guys pick FMOD over, like, WYs or, or <laughs> WYs or whatever you call it? Uh, I think we actually just looked at the price point at the, the moment, licenses. At the last yeah. license. Uh, That's fair. At that, <laughs> that moment in time. So, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it's it's really visually. I think it's really easy to work in uh, in FMOD. It's it's a lot like another DAW or something. Yeah, it acts it acts a lot more like a DAW than FMOD would yeah. act like a Windows program. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um. Not that I have anything against Windows. It's what I'm playing on right now. But I'm just <laughs> saying, um, yeah, Wise is definitely not as user-friendly. Um, so mm -hmm. during the like the, the, the composing process, did you have any like gear that you, you know, like pieces of favorite gear or plugins that you would use for everything? Um, yeah, we, we ended up with the, with the kind of, 80s style with the analog sound and and right. I have a I have a few uh, analog synthesizers at home so when I make music I actually work from home and then uh, uh, yeah I use uh, Logic to make the music okay and and uh, almost all the sound design is actually done in uh, Ableton Live huh that's interesting so so I'm uh, kind of jumping uh, back and forth 
So you do you use the Ableton the stock sense or do you have like plugins like favorite plugins? Um, I actually use real analog synthesizers. Oh, oh, like actual physical analog synthesizers. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Like, like which ones? Um, I have the the Mook uh, Voyager XL, Ooh. and uh, and uh, the Sub Fatty is also really nice. Nice. So nice. and I. I actually went to Asheville for a uh, for us for the MOOC festival at some point, where I uh, created my own little synthesizer. So that's also uh, oh, that's so <laughs> some cool. sounds that from that here? one. It's actually also uh, some of the sounds I'm, I created on that. Uh, some of the, the, do you remember the, the, which the, ones? Uh, I don't remember, but it's when I make uh, machines uh, that's that's have kind of a rhythmical sound. I uh -huh. sometimes use that for doing that. What that about this so uh, moving cool. wall here? That's it. No, it doesn't use it. Okay. No. That must be so cool, though, to be able to put your own, like, not only your own sound design, but your own physical synth hardware yeah. into yeah, one that was, project. That was cool. Yeah. Oh, like, is a huge electronics nerd and building so much stuff with <laughs> Arduinos and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm a real nerd. So yeah. uh, we've got another question in the chat asking, uh, what what is the advantage you get of sound designing in Ableton and then making the music in Logic? The, the the person also wants you to know that they are a logic user <laughs> actually it's it's it was kind of more like a hardware thing um, I normally uh, uh, before I started in eternal vision I I used logic to to make all my stuff in mm -hmm. um, but I knew Ableton and uh, we had to buy some hardware at some point and uh, thought why not we, we were all going to have uh, Windows machines, so uh, it was oh, Mac yeah. Windows. So okay. I could have easily done everything in Logic, uh, but but I actually, I'm I'm getting really fond of uh, of Ableton also, and and I'm actually starting uh, to make some music on in that also. Nice, because yeah. I think it has some uh, some tools uh, when composing uh, to make the the form uh, to, to make the structure of a song uh, a more uh, creative process i think cool in, in ableton you can yeah you can kind of live perform uh, right think you you think with yeah. your hands yeah, exactly um the uh yeah and it's not exactly you know if you're using a windows uh pro tools doesn't exactly play nice so no i, I actually i have uh some experience just from uh, when I uh, was at the school with uh, Pro Tools, but I haven't used it, used it since, actually. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've, uh, we hear that more and more, that people are moving away from Pro Tools. And I don't know necessarily that it's the DAW's fault, it's more just, you know, the cost. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, so, when did you, like, you started on a C64, were there any in-between steps from that to Logic? Or was it just like you kind of played around with other DAWs and then just picked Logic? Um, yeah, I started with the 64, which were these uh, tracker programs. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, also on the Amiga, uh, yes. starting to, to yes, play awesome. with the samples and, and stuff like that. Uh, and then I actually have had a little gap in because I got a PC and then uh, there wasn't really anything good at that point. I, uh, and it was, the MIDI was just starting uh, right. and it was terrible. It sounded like crap, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so there was kind of a pause in, in my creativity in music. Uh, but I think, I think it was Cakewalk. Uh, I don't know that I've even heard of Cakewalk. I think that was the first door I used, and, and I then I, I, I uh, tried uh, Cubase also. Okay, yeah, that's another common one we've been hearing a lot is Cubase. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, the uh, how do you feel about Reaper? Have you tried using it at all? I actually haven't tried it. That's uh, almost embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily if you need to feel embarrassed by it. It's very daunting. But I feel like with someone with programming background, I feel like Reaper is uh, 
it's very common to hear that people start using Reaper as you can, like, you know, uh, customize it and code it to your own standards. Okay. Um, sounds, sounds really just, cool. Just an idea. <laughs> uh, so, when you guys were in development, was there any, like, hurdles that you you guys came up against that you had, like, like sonically that you had to really get creative with? Besides dealing without visuals? Um, I think the whole thing that, that uh, I had this period of playing around with stuff, but but making it more uh, solid, kind of. Uh, we 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 didn't have the story, and and we really didn't have. We didn't even know if it should be level based. Uh, so so it, was, it was really difficult. I was just trying uh, out a lot of stuff at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so it was it was really nice. We had the time. Uh, the, the opportunity to play around with all of this, and, and that's what made the end result. I'm, I'm sure. Um, but it was a, a long process. Yeah. Uh, you also worked a lot of on the, um, the the room tones on each individual level, and how we could transition from one room to another. Yeah. And uh, the way we actually go from one room to another is by some teleporting magic behind the scenes, and you had some challenges with that with the audio and it should follow you and stuff like mm. that yeah yeah that seems to be a, a a relatively common issue currently with uh indie games where it's like you, you have all this unloading and you know loading behind the scenes when you change change rooms or change you know so that, like scenes um and how to make that not only code wise but also like sonically make sense um yeah I did notice at the beginning of I when I first started playing it uh, the other night I was like, "Where is the music?" I was like, "What what is that? What is happening?" And then I started. You start you know because the beginning you're all like shell shocked from the you know the light matter exploding. And then I was like, "Oh hmm. okay, there it is." And then I I, st I went back into the extras menu, and started listening to the the tracks individually. And it's so like, like it's it's you very you peaceful in a way, which is. It's nice for a puzzle game because you don't, you know, you don't want to feel stressed. You don't want to feel like, you, you know, the time, the clock's against you. Especially, I mean, if if it is, of course you do. But you know, in a game like this, where there's no timer or anything, it seems uh, to make more sense this way. Oh, I can just fall. I'm dumb. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we actually at the big we. we talked a lot about uh, that the game shouldn't be scary so that's also an influence on the music yeah uh, it... to kind of keep everything calm because uh, if the music had been uh, uh, with a lot of rhythm and, and a lot of tempo it, it could have been yeah. more scary but it does get, get a little more you give some more tempo later in the, the levels in the end of the game yeah. it's a little more intense and a little more uh, like the, the character you are working or talking to, he's kind of like changing along the way and he, oh. he gets a little angry at, at you and, and he wants you to get out of the place and, and the music reflects that as well. Right. Yeah, um, I, I definitely wouldn't say the game is scary. It's unnerving though, in a way. I guess also that's just like my own influence from you know playing bioshock and playing portal where it's like there's the one the one person is against you in this case the the ceo Listen, um or you know glados or or whatever the the game is but um the 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 color palettes you guys chose to are very like peaceful in a way you know it's a lot of gray and black and <clears throat> it's 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 peaceful in a way because you don't there's nothing like glaring at you it's always just the light that you're going towards so it, it's well it's really well designed I, I like that a lot um yeah and the level you are at now things are actually going to change a little bit uh, uh -oh. when you complete the next level it will change both the color and like the the, the vibe okay. because we it is this bluish uh, place but we changed it a couple of times so to give some variety right cool um, yeah, I haven't gotten too far yet. This is actually as far as I've gotten here. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So musically, were there? Do you have any like specific influences that you you credit to your style for not you know not only this game but just in general? Um, yeah, I, I've I enjoy making uh, stuff that's that's analog and <laughs> and yeah, that's kind of uh, so just like analog, I... any any analog like. Any bands yeah. or artists in specific? That you I, like? I really like uh, Daft Punk and uh, nice. also uh, Massive Attack, uh, okay. Portishead, and yeah. And the music from Blade Runner was also a big inspiration for this. Yeah, I could, I can definitely hear that. Oh, uh, that was not right. Um, the, uh, the Stranger analog, Things the, was also. Uh, yeah. I was going to ask how you feel about Stranger <laughs> Things. Um, because it, it, I feel like that's been a big, I don't know, a big influence on resurgence, um, in analog gear. Not you know, not just as a concept, but as a as a sonic. Yeah. Format. They really, I think they really capture the the style of of uh, the eighties. Yeah, perfectly. yeah. <laughs> and I, I was there, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what it was like. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, we we did an interview with Tom Salta a while ago, um, and he has a podcast that's just called Two Guys in the '80s," um, <laughs> where he talks. You know, they talk about Stranger Things, and they talk about all this kind of, you know, analog synth type vintagey music. I guess you would call it, but it's it's very. Um, I don't know. It's 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 got a resurgence now for sure. Um, was there? Any specific like influence for the the game design? Uh, <clears throat> I think we have played so many games and and so uh, <laughs> read so many stories that we just take all the small pieces that we like, and all the inspirational games you talked about in the beginning. Of course, they are big. Uh, we're big fans of, of Portal, Telos Principle, Bioshock, yeah. and so on. Uh, so I think <clears throat> the hardest for us have been to find our own style right uh we haven't tried making puzzles before so how do you make a puzzle and and what should it entail and how should the universe be built right so but because we're this very flat company all of us can kind of chime in mm -hmm. uh which is both a good thing but it can also make it difficult to find the 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 like the, the voice. What, what do you call it the voice of the game mm -hmm. Uh, so we we do have people who are spearheading the story and spearheading the the, the style and right. but all of us we we made puzzles uh, we we prototyped them with uh, Lego and and just <laughs> made like, many awesome. many puzzles <laughs> so that's so cool yeah um, did you guys ever have moments where you were like you know where it, I I don't want to say that it like became like, what was your biggest frustration in the like in working together with such a small team? Was there like limits that you had to, you know, restrictions that you could like things that you couldn't put in the game? I guess we are very good at, at like talking and maybe talking too much because we all <laughs> want to find like uh, we want to agree on something, and if somebody does not agree on whatever, then uh, we cannot really we, we need to find a common uh, position, ground. yeah. Uh, because we don't have a dedicated like game designer or game director, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it made the game stronger in the end. But it's also one of the reasons why it took a long time to make, because we tried so many things. And I think we we maybe wrote like two or three different stories and yeah. made two hundred puzzles for the game, and yeah. you made I don't know fifty uh, pieces of music, uh, stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, Dang. I think it end ended up like something like that. Uh, yeah. And but I'm assuming they weren't like because you were saying that it wasn't always this ambient type score, right? So mm. did did the fifty evolve over time, or did like was there a definite like a definitive point where you were like, okay, now it goes ambient? I think I think at some point we we found that it it had to be kind of ambient, mm -hmm. uh, and and yeah, and then we kind of skipped the some of the the tracks before that yeah right. i remember a lot of the initial music was it sounds like something for a trailer 
with kind of like yeah. ups and downs and the intensity and it was really nice when we did trailers mm. but for the game itself it didn't really fit that well we actually have the tr the credit music is actually from uh, from one <laughs> of the trailers <laughs> really nice yeah, yeah. um so we've got another another question from the chat uh during development were there any of levels that were too hard to beat <laughs> yes a lot <laughs> <laughs> And, and it was so nice because uh, we were all making puzzles and we are also testing each other's puzzles. So we would kind of say, hey, come over and try. And if you could see that the person could not solve it, then you knew there was something in that puzzle that was really good. Mm -hmm. And you would kind of like work on that. Right. But there are a couple of puzzles in the game that uh, some of us still have problems solving because they're <laughs> so complicated and it's not something you can just remember. You have to kind of understand like all the steps. And, right. Yeah. yeah um... Do you guys watch a lot of like game design, uh, I don't know, videos or anything when you were working on this or did it kind of just come naturally? I think it's a combination. Like yeah. many of us, we do read and, and watch all the things out there uh, from game design and stuff. But puzzle design is something we have, I guess, uh, learned the hard way by doing it mm -hmm. so much and, and just trying out what, what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Um, I think at some point we we kind of had the tools to make puzzles. Yeah. So when we had the tools, it was just everybody, here's the tools, try to make puzzles. So yeah. that was uh, kind of the way it started. And, and of course, we got better at it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. like this puzzle right here is, I don't, <laughs> I, I'm stuck. <laughs> do, do you want a hint? Uh, no, I, yeah, you can is have that, a hint. Is that cheating? I don't know. <laughs> No, but I think you should see the next area. It's really interesting. Okay, how do I, how do, I do it? So, so uh, what we usually say first is, what is the problem? What are you trying to achieve? Right, so I'm trying to get the light over to this side, right? So mm -hmm. I can, oh, is that it? Oh, no, because then I can't get over here. Hmm. Yeah, so what, what do you have at your disposal? The one light and the moving platform. Mm-hmm. So what, what can you do with the platform? You could put the lamp on it in different ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you have tried almost oh, any, every God combination dang except dang one. <laughs> <laughs> like this, right? Mm, let's see. <laughs> that doesn't sound promising. <laughs> ah, sweet, OK. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Cool. Yes. I did it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I have an oof in the chat for asking. <laughs> the but you, you did it. <laughs> and, uh, and by the way, if, if people are playing the game at home, um, if they're interested in learning about the puzzle design, we actually have developer commentaries in the game. If you go into the menu and uh, go into extras, you can get a speech bubble in all puzzles. And you, if you go into them, we talk about the puzzle design for like five, ten minutes each uh, level. Oh, this is the other character you were talking about. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now it's all purple. I I, purple is my favorite color, so I like this. Um, we have a question from the chat. Uh, how long was development in total? We started as a company 2016. We released the game in early 2020. So, yeah, and we started the game as a university project even further back. That, uh, right. About these four years in like full time to work. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nice. So about four years on this game specifically. Yes. So, and uh, that includes uh, figuring out how to make your own company and learning all the things you need to, to know about, like legal stuff and, and yeah. economics and all that. That, uh, that must have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> when there's money on the, on the table is fun. When there's no money, it's kind of like... Not as fun. <laughs> Difficult because you, uh, we do have some some initiatives here in Denmark and some funds and some investors, but it's really really difficult to get money in yeah. Denmark. Did you guys have? Um, did so you said you went to a bunch of game jams. Was this originally like conceived at a game jam or? No, no, it was not. Um, it was basically we started a university project and uh, one of the guys he said hey there's this game called closure it's a 2d uh, game kind of like mario where things in shadow they don't exist so oh. you can actually jump through a platform if it is in shadow and he said hey that's cool how about we try to make that concept but in 3d 
and we said yeah let's do that and uh, we took inspiration from closure and antichamber and tried to to kind of make a game out of that yeah that kind of reminds me of like braid a little bit where yeah. the, the platforms only exist in certain time periods exactly mm. yeah interesting um Sorry, my cat's going crazy. <laughs> uh, so for the back to the audio side of things, um, when you do you have like a, a routine when you start when you know when you get into the to get into the mindset for composing? Like, you know, if you have a deadline, you have to meet, but you know, you're kind of not feeling yeah. like there's something you can do. Uh, I kind of had uh, to, to get into the process of uh, how uh, just to make music for the game i actually set up a premises that was that yeah, i was working from home and i had to make one track on the day at in one day oh so, god <laughs> that's so, so that many was, uh, <laughs> but that, that was it actually worked really good uh, and yeah uh, i think it's it, it's for me it's really important to get into the flow of uh, making music so you kind of know within an hour if if what you're working with works or not right uh, so so it was a, i was able to restart uh, one or two times on a day uh, and still finish a song in time yeah that i mean i guess if you're doing it full time it makes sense did you ever get like writer or I guess it's still writer's block, composer's block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I got that every time I to make a new piece of music. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to uh, do, I guess. <laughs> kind of, it, it's it's just kind of scary that uh, you know at the end of the day you should have something. Yeah. yeah. But also, uh, we at, in the team, uh, everybody understands how it is. Uh, both. Uh, creating puzzles and creating music is it's a creative process and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't so i would say the pressure one was not uh, i have to deliver it was more like i want to have something to show off the next day and we can talk about it and yeah and make it uh, talk about how to make it better or, or yeah. if it works are there other musicians on the team as well or is it are you the the main like how did you become the one <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, how did I become the one? <laughs> you were the one. <laughs> That's easy. Yeah, um, yeah, but I, I yeah, I, as I said, uh, I started as an intern, and uh, yeah, and I, I make music also, and 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 when we needed music, I started making music for the game. And... Yeah, I guess we didn't really realize how important audio is before we hired you. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Aww. we are very lucky that that <laughs> you you know what to do because none of us know anything about it. It's interesting because a lot of times we'll get students that come into the school and be like, "I didn't even know game audio was a thing." And it's like, hmm. of course yeah. it's a thing. Like every piece of media, like you know, people know Hans Zimmer, people know these famous movie composers, but no one ever thinks about like the fam you know the famous game composers. I feel mm. like. It's a little different now with people like Mick Gordon, where like his stuff is so very in your face. I mean, have you guys played the new Doom or Wolf or like Wolfenstein? Uh, not, I didn't play the new. Uh, no, not, did, you, did you play? It? No, no. But there, there's a couple of guys in the company that are so big fans of Doom that they yeah. talk about it all the time and the music and. And we heard the music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a great game. I mean, like I, you know, not to fanboy too much, but it's a great game. Um, and the, I saw this a meme recently that said, "In Doom, you are the uh, Doom is the only game where you have boss music." <laughs> it's, it, it is really cool. Did you like d d during the 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 development of this game? Did you get to play test it as well, both of you? Uh, we play tested the game all the time. I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess since it's your game, you kind of have to, but um, did you bring in outside people as well? Yes. Um, we, depending on where we were in the project, sometimes we would bring in a, a stranger in the office like once a week where we sat down and they played the game from start to finish or whatever we had. Uh -huh. uh, that we did for the first uh, like two years of the project, but then later on we started involving people uh, remotely, 
uh, we have a Discord server where we had like 400 uh, test participants playing our alpha and uh, got a lot of feedback from, from those guys. I did see the, the Discord link at the beginning. Um, mm. I'm interested. <laughs> um, but it's, but it's, uh, it's funny because uh, every time we test something, uh, if we don't mention be aware of the sound and music, mm -hmm. we don't get any feedback. Yeah. That's really, yeah. It's, it's yeah, so I guess strange. that's the only thing we haven't figured out how to test the music. But it is also uh, very laid back, the, the, the music for this. Uh, it it but. is, but it's still important in, in, the, in the, the same aspect as we were saying before. Like, if the music was really tense, like, mm. I, I mean, the game would still be fun mechanically, but it wouldn't be as fun to just, like, glide through so much because you would feel so like made you know you would be so anxious the whole time oh crap that you had to like you know you had to finish the puzzle before whatever the scary music is like you know whatever it's implying happens mm. um i don't i mean i, I it, it sounds like that was very intentional on your guys design part which is uh i mean it's great considering yeah and it kind of comes from the initial uh, university prototype we did it had a totally different look it was uh, totally black and white and it was it t took uh, it was um, taking place inside a prison so it was kind of scary just from the setting and people it was actually not uh, on purpose that it should be scary but a lot of people thought it was scary and we, did, we didn't like that aspect of it so when we had to reboot the game uh, we changed the style totally and and just did everything we could to get away from that scary uh, vibe were you involved in the university project as well um no nope. no nope. after i wasn't um so when uh what what else changed between here and between there and the the final product um in terms of the game design and the game mechanics, uh, the shadow concept changed a lot. In the initial prototype, um, if things were in shadow, you could move through them. So collisions uh, didn't happen if something was in shadow. Mm -hmm. And that was interesting because then you could actually jump through a shadow on a wall. And uh, for a long time, we, we tried to find ways of using that as a puzzle mechanic. But then at some point, we thought that this doesn't work and we need to change something and what is this game actually about and we came up with the idea that the game is not about shadows it's about light and what is light in this game it's kind of a resource that you can use to kind of decide where you can walk and where you cannot walk so we changed the, the shadow concept to only be on the floors and we changed it so that if you go out there in on a shadow on the floor then you kind of sink down um so we, we kind of changed the, the, how dynamic the, the shadows are in this game. Yeah, I think the... the and it's, sorry, can, yeah, go ahead. It's just uh, when, when you said, Gustav, we had, we had this, you could go through walls. Uh, I actually worked a lot with, uh, with that uh, regarding the sound because I wanted it to feel really nice to go from maybe a small room into a big room so I, I worked a lot with the with these reverb stones, and that was actually why I made my own way of uh, doing these square reverb stones instead of the spherical that you normally make. Because did, you could you then go out? from one room through the wall, and then you could just feel that the room opens up uh, through the the reverb. That's uh, super yeah. cool. How did you how did you do that? uh yeah technical it, it's uh yeah it's kind of two two uh, collision boxes inside each other and uh yeah calculating some vectors and and stuff very uh, cool. and and, <laughs> and 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 uh uh yeah turning up and down the the reverb uh, in in the interpolation between two zones yeah basically. yeah yeah okay that makes sense um are there any other like personal unique touches that you put into this game sonically? Um, yeah, there's also the when you get a little further in the in the game, we have these uh, photon connectors, like light beams, mm -hmm. uh, laser light beams that connect to each other, 
and uh, there's there's some funny things about them uh, uh, sound wise because they can if you connect you can connect uh, a mother source and one of these uh, photon connectors uh, and if you connect more than one then uh, I actually change the the harmonics of of the sound so you get more harmonics uh, the more of those you connect so, you, really so you know cool. how That's how so many cool. yeah so they play what do they play as did you have like a a mindset for what key they should play or anything or you just kind of made it work i kind of I made a sound that it, it should sound like laser but it but it uh, laser it's crystal stuff right <laughs> But but it, it also had a tone in it, so I, I had the opportunity to to just add uh, extra harmonics nice. on top of it. Um, did you? Uh, <clears throat> how does it? How do you go? Do you have like a process that you use for making sounds for things that you know that that don't exist? You know, in real life, you, you, like no one knows necessarily what a laser sounds like. I mean, someone. Mm. I'm, <laughs> Some scientists probably do, but like you know, what uh, it, a laser is light. So how how like making sounds for light? Was that... It's it's funny because we had we have the the uh, the, the the beam the the what is what do we call it the main main beam in the in the game. It it it's kind of like a laser, but it's not uh, so right. the light matter beam. Yeah, yeah, the core, the, the core beam, uh, and uh, I think I, I normally I try to find I found find uh, words that describe the object, uh, and then try to put them into the sound domain. Uh, so it's it's a huge beam, so you kind of need some basic stuff uh, because it's huge, but it's also crystals that make the 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 beam so you also need some shimmering uh, yeah yeah so I so it, that's kind of uh, the process of thinking of words that describe the object and then trying to put it into the sound domain lots of on onomatopoeia in your at home just like <laughs> it's, it's surprisingly <laughs> difficult to talk about audio especially when you don't so and Ulla, like he's trying to describe things for us or if he wants feedback it's really difficult because we don't have the terms and we don't know what to say like right. if you sound like a laser beam what is that i have no clue yeah. <laughs> just make it sound more lasery <laughs> yeah. yeah another thing you worked on was um at some point we uh, thought that it would be nice to have some feedback on um, if you're close to the shadows because people were constantly dying by accidentally walking out in a shadow so we right. thought maybe we can make some audio like you know in in the for example in call of duty you have a compass down in the bottom of the screen that kind of shows your direction so we right. thought maybe we can do the same with audio so if you're almost uh, backing up to a shadow or to the side of a shadow then it could make some kind of like yeah scary sound uh, like a tremolo or something yeah and we, we kind of we ended up uh removing it yeah. we, we tried it out but but we ended up removing it because it was too distracting it, it's you're always close to to shadows in this game <laughs> it does so it was just yes <laughs> it was really really difficult uh, we talked about ways to do it uh, we could uh, uh, just uh, turn it down if, if it's been there a long time but we tried we tried a lot of stuff and uh, and it really didn't work so is it hard um like when you're even communicating with because I find you know even communicating with students sometimes being like yeah so modulating this gives you a woody effect or like a muddy effect and everyone uses different adjectives to describe things did you have a hard time trying to describe your sounds to people yeah <laughs> it is hot <laughs> I think it is did you guys come up with like but... a shorthand or something or anything like that you can understand my oh sorry did you guys come up with like a shorthand, like like passwords, or you know, like a, a special language for each other sound design? To yeah, I think it can. It has probably evolved yeah. through, throughout the maybe <laughs> without us noticing, but I think it, it's it's gotten easier to yeah. talk about. I would something. say we put a lot of trust in in the work you did. Uh, so sometimes we didn't understand it, but you always ended up with some nice results. So so it's, it sounds as long as it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, did you have... Wait a second. Um, do you guys know if anyone speedruns this game? Yes. We actually have an active speedrunning community on Discord. Yes. So they actually uh, speed ran, uh, there was a speedrunning event uh, like a couple of weeks ago on uh, Games Done Quick where yeah. they played the game on Twitch. So that was really cool. That's awesome. How does that how does that feel to have like to watch your game get broken? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, very interesting because um, like a couple, uh, about a year ago, there was one guy on Discord who said, "Hey, why don't?" do something for speedrunners and I was like I don't think people will speedrun a game like this but uh, oh well uh, I put in uh, some speedrunning stats that you can turn on in the game like showing uh, how how much time you spent on the levels how, how many times you jumped and stuff like that and uh, that speedrunning mode it actually made it so that a lot of people when they when the game came out yeah you can see it in the extras menu um, when the game came out uh, oh. people found out about the game and oh. uh, started speedrunning it and joining the Discord. And uh, they were, in the beginning, they were a little bit afraid that we would fix stuff that uh, they found because of course there are glitches and, and exploits in a game like this. Right. But I told them that um, that's fine I, um, unless it, it kind of dis disturbs the main game like a, a, an average player. If it doesn't uh, ruin the experience for a normal gamer, right. then we will just leave it in. And they, they seem very happy with that, so they are they are trying to complete it in, in new ways and like finding things we have never ever thought about before. <laughs> so I, I see it as a really cool experience, and it's a good. I, I like the communication back and forth. Like when we um, put in the developer commentaries yeah, a couple of months ago, they found out that there's a small thing at a very specific level where if you have the developer commentaries enabled. Then there's a one door that opens quicker than if you don't have it enabled. <laughs> so now we are officially part of the speedruns because they enable us for that, that second, then they disable us again. That's awesome. That's so funny. <laughs> it saves like six frames, but it's so worth it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's, I mean, it's funny that you say that, like, someone wouldn't speed run this game i've seen people speed run the most ridiculous stuff <laughs> yeah speed running pepsi man and stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so I, I really like seeing how people are so creative and also that they understand a the game in such details that they sometimes they know the game better than we do and and they can kind of do things we have never imagined before we we kind of had internal competition also uh, <laughs> in trying to complete it as fast as possible but but we're not talking about that anymore <laughs> you guys don't don't speed run your own game <laughs> they are so much better than us so <laughs> i think i watched a video the other day where people uh, the original developers of half-life 2 they were watching uh, people speed run yeah, half-life mm. and it was just amazing to, to see and they almost couldn't uh, recognize their own game because he played it in such a way that just like Broke yeah, it. it was crazy. Yeah, I've seen. I mean, the Half Life speedruns are nuts. They do like those weird speed exploits where you just click yeah. through the levels. What's the. Yes. Was there anything troubling that you guys saw when, <laughs> when you were watching people speedrun? Like, oh, oh no, this broke too much. Um, there's a way where if you position a lamp on a special uh, surface and you jump on top of the lamp, then you can actually bounce and get it very high up in the air. And uh, when we saw that, we actually, in that specific level, we put in a special place where you can only get up there if you know how to do it. And we call it the speedrunner corner. <laughs> and there's a, it's kind of like a small uh, arcade up there with a computer and with a cat and stuff like that. And uh, we thought that we fixed that bug, uh, but we left that speedrunning corner up there. But we found out later that the bug is still there and people are still finding the, the place. <laughs> so that's, that's funny awesome. for us. That's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, oh, but there was one um, one level where you actually puzzles in a row, and then you return back. And uh, we found out that people were solving the first puzzle in a way that we didn't intend. And when you try to get back, the lamp is not where it should be, so you can actually not complete it when you get back. So that was just a thing we had to, to fix because it actually it would, like, destroyed the game for, for yeah. other people. Yeah. Interesting. So let me tell you um, about my technology. So, let's see here. Uh, 
So this is actually where the where the free demo ends. That's where you got to right now. Sweet. Hello. So this was the the alpha. This is where the alpha ended. No, it's um, when you you can actually uh, be on Steam and play up to this point completely for free, and then that. Uh, place where you just walk through the, the toll booth, you can actually, if you haven't uh, purchased the game, then he asks you if you want to buy the full game. And if you want to, you just uh, open a, a Steam page and uh, put in uh, your credit card information, then you continue forward. So it's a very seamless experience going from the free demo to the full game. That's awesome. It's a mm -hmm. lot, it's, that's a lot better than the ones that completely take you out of it. <laughs> yeah, it was our publisher Aspire who suggested that we did something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took a long time to figure out how to, to, to make it, and we had to talk to Valve and, and other people. But mm -hmm. in the end, it, it is something we're really happy with. Nice. Did you did you guys get to talk to Gabe? Is that what, did that happen? <laughs> no, but we talked to some other people at Valve. <laughs> email threads back and forth, and we also talked to them about the portal references. If and uh, there's, that. there's actually a portal uh, Sonic or a musical reference later on. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. yes. Is it like, and, like yeah. a, a theme or something? I don't know if you uh, you will get to experience it. Spoil it? Spoil it. Yeah. It's the, uh, yeah, it's it's the, uh, I don't remember. It's, it. it's still alive. It's still alive. <laughs> the, Is the... it awesome? That's, oh yeah. man, yes, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Playing love on, a, on a radio. Uh, yeah, it, it was basically, they asked us, uh, hey, you want to, to do some references to, to Portal? And we said, yeah, sure, what can we do? Uh, I don't know, just uh, come with suggestions. And then we, we said, okay, what about some uh, voiceover references? What about some 3D models? And what about some music? And they said yes to all of it. And uh, we put it in and Ulla, he did uh, a, like a, is it 8-bit? I don't know, like a- Like a chip tune. No, no, it, it's, just, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's just yeah, it's just an, analog version yeah. of, uh, of Still Alive. <laughs> That's awesome. And I, I just want to say uh, the analog stuff, it's, it's not, I'm really into it, but but I'm not against using digital stuff at all because I think that can sound just as nice as analog. Yeah, you just have to know what makes the analog sound. Right. Did you? Yeah, yeah. like analog emulation. Do you have any yeah. pieces of software that you find yourself coming back to, like like sound design stuff or? Uh, yes, I I use uh, when I want to make. Uh, real analog stuff. I, I use uh, the Monarch from uh, uh, Native Instruments. The reactor, yeah. Yeah, in, in Reactor. And uh, um, I also use Massive. Um, nice. And uh, FM8. Uh, I used a lot for machines in this game, actually, because I like the way you can make uh, FM rhythmical sounds in that. The performer. Yeah, uh, uh, we've got a question. How do you feel about the Arturia V collection? I haven't, e I haven't really played with them. Actually, uh, that's stupid because uh, it's analog. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's all the analog emulated stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, uh, I, I like haven't, I haven't tried it, so I can't answer that. I like this question because it's one of my favorites for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess I would, I would like it. I think. <laughs> But Probably, I don't. I would, I would guess so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so but I think it's really, it's really, it's really nice to have a have a hardware machine where you can actually turn the the knobs for real. Uh, I, yeah. I kind of get more into the flow. Totally. When I when I can do that. Yeah, I uh, I recently got a. What is this thing? Mini log, the mini log XD, and it's mm -hmm. like. It's so much fun just to mess around with, like, you can sound design so much faster. It's so much easier. And it's, it really inspires, it's, it's, it really helps me make music because normally I don't start with a bass or I start with a sound. So I, the sound kind of in, inspires me to do the rest. Interesting. So the, the, that's kind of where I start just creating a sound that I think is, is it's cool. It's always interesting hearing where people begin composing because like I'm I'm a drummer first and so mm -hmm. I start with drums like I always start with drums but then you know as someone who started with you know uh, computer sound design 
hearing that you start with sound design is is really interesting. Um, yeah. It's it's different from I guess what I what I hear from students. Um, but it's funny sometimes I, I it, it's sometimes I try to do it in another way and and then I end up with other results and and that's also a nice thing to do. So so maybe just try to change the the, the starting point could right. make something uh, new Entirely and creative. Different. So do you have, do you use a lot of like, it's hard to, it's kind of hard to tell, but in the, the, the tracks that I was listening to in the, the, the sound menu, it sounds like, you know, you know, they're all very ambient, but were, th were there a lot of, um, like light motifs or any kind of, you know, things like that that you use? Like, is there a theme for the CEO or is there a theme for the, 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 the lady scientist? We don't, uh, I don't have themes like that. It, some of the songs are repeated different places uh, where we have uh, Arthur that uh, Virgil talks about his friend, his partner, Arthur, yeah. his partner, and um, we have a kind of a song for that. Uh, so it's not like I made different songs with the same motif, but mm -hmm. it's the same song that, that repeats again. Yeah, I yeah. mean that's that's kind of thematic in that you know it's the, uh, it it re it happens when a character is mentioned, mm. and it's actually kind of interesting because Ulrich he did a lot of uh, made a lot of music, but we didn't know what music should be in what levels. So it was actually after the, all the levels were built that you and our narrative designer sat down and said, okay, this level should have this kind of. Uh, uh, intensity and this kind of mood so we take that music and put it there and then we take it here and like it was a big bag of, of a lot of music you had and then you had to pick and choose yeah uh, some of them are made for the for the levels but actually most of them are, are made before the levels was even done so and the story was done <laughs> yeah did, did the story come later for this it seems like it would um <clears throat> we in the beginning of the project, we didn't have a story. Uh, then we, we wrote one story that was okay, but it didn't fit the levels. And then we changed stuff. And like with the story that is in the game now, we I think we worked on that for a year, one year and a half or so, mm -hmm. and has been back and forth with the, the levels. And the, yeah, so it, it kind of came later, but it also kind of took over many of the, the things. So it's very intertwined now. So you said that the sound came before much of the story did you for any of was any of it like did you have to redo any of it afterwards when you're like okay this is the story is going to be this now so we need you to change this to fit the story or was it was it kind of just cool how yeah, i think I, I made some tracks afterwards after the story was done we, we needed we, we knew we needed some tracks for different areas so they were made directly for those areas um and and some of the music that were made before that, as as we said, I maybe made fifty pieces right. of music or something. So a lot of it was uh, trashed. Uh... <laughs> so what do you what do you do with the songs that don't make it? Do they just do they go? In I the listen aisle? to them every night. <laughs> <laughs> we are actually uh, talking to different partners about releasing the music, including the the, the pieces that were cut from the final game. That's awesome. Um, and a lot of people ask us, why don't you just release it now? The, the answer is that, or the reason is that if you release music that you can actually purchase from one of the big uh, places, then um, it's really easy to get flagged on, on YouTube with copyrights. Right. So that would mean that a lot of YouTubers, they would actually get their videos muted because right. we released the music and we don't want that. Right. So we're trying to find a solution to that. That makes sense. Um, have you guys thought about making a VR version of this game? <laughs> a lot of people ask us, and I think my go-to answer is that we like VR, but we also think that VR requires like a game designed around it, because if you just put it in as an afterthought, then it's not worth it. Yeah. So. The game has to be built around it and the movement and, and stuff is not easy. And there's a reason why it has taken this long with Half-Life Alex to actually become this killer app. Right. And uh, I think it requires a lot of attention to detail and a lot of uh, technical uh, and design knowledge that right. at the moment we don't have. 
That's that's fair. Um, have you ever messed around with VR audio before? Um, no, actually not. Uh, I tried some at the at Sonic College with, with the binaural network and uh, uh, yeah, the like head and, mics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, They're so creepy. But but I haven't I haven't tried it uh, in 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 a game or mm -hmm. anything. Have you composed for um, many other games, or was this your first? This is my first. Yeah, that's. I, yeah. I was trying to find references, and I couldn't. I couldn't find any. <laughs> <laughs> um, Only for the games I made myself. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean the uh, the personality of this game definitely shines through both, you know, both musically and design wise. Um, are you guys well i guess you're probably you probably can't can't talk about anything new you guys are working on currently no unfortunately not yeah. but we are we are very happy with this uh, game and it, it kind of have, has all the things that we wanted it to we there's no major things that have been cut of course there's a lot of music being cut but we, we are very happy with the end product yeah i feel like uh, of all th i mean music's been cut but also you know design choices have been cut the shadow thing you were talking about earlier yes it's a it's a learning process i guess <laughs> it is and yeah. we our first uh, our main goal was to make a game that had length that, and a difficulty that makes it able, make it possible for for most people if they want to they can play it from start to finish that it should not be too difficult but it should be challenging but if you just pay attention you should be able to to complete the game yeah, that seems that seems fair. That seems about right. And it's like when I when I played something like Bendy and the Ink Machine, parts of it seemed like shoehorned in, like the, the like there's combat in that game, and I don't like the combat wasn't anything special. It wasn't necessarily adding to it. And it feels mm. like a lot of this game, both audio wise and design wise, again, are is very deliberate, which I like a lot. It's very um, purposeful, I guess is the word. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, crazy gameplay prototypes and mechanics that didn't make it into the game because it didn't really fit the, the theme of the game. And we decided to just have like this lamp that you're walking with and the photon connected to see the next level and the sensors. So we have these three ma main mechanics and we just try to make as much use of them as possible. Right. And uh, we hope that the, the game kind of like feels like we uh, explored what is possible with these mechanics. Yeah, it's it's like doing more with less. I, I mean, I talk about this a lot in my, in the class that I teach, where we, uh, you know, like Koji Kondo, for you know the big example, is a you know revered as one of the great composers, but like the NES could only output like four waves. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, not... em embrace the limitations. Exactly. Yeah, and that's re it's really nice. It's really incredible what came out of uh, those uh, small uh, chips <laughs> at, at the time yeah. and, and and it, it kind of created a, a, sh a genre because of of the limitations mm -hmm. so, yeah exactly i mean chiptune's whole thing is basically like exactly we're yeah. only using these sounds because this is what we have i guess or not even because of what we have but this is what we like um, yeah, yeah. and just yeah. let us know if you need a hint <laughs> uh not again <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of what you said earlier like what do i have yeah what am i, I, I must say that, that you're talking and, and and playing the game is not easy and you're doing a really good job yeah. like we have seen many people play test this game and and it seems like you're just breaching through mo most of it so that's really cool well that's a, that's that that's nice <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't feel that way <laughs> uh okay one 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 hint i guess um yeah you you have that sensor and you want to light up the sensor yep. um but you have two lamps and you kind of need to the lamp that is on uh, the lamp that is uh, first away from you right now you need to somehow light up the sensor while you walk towards the, oh, the gate god dang it i think there's delay on the video uh yeah, the stream we see, so it's a little difficult, but I guess you you know what we're talking about. I think so. Wait, no, dang it, no, that doesn't work. Cause then I walked. Through the <laughs> shadow. 
Ah! If only I was good at games. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so you, you want to walk over there, um, but you also... Yeah, how should I say it? <laughs> I... <laughs> it's kind of... Uh... Yeah, you have to... Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's because we want to it's help like, you. It's like talking to... about <laughs> Yeah, but we don't want to give the solution away. Yeah. You, you get it yourself. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But you have to walk with the with the lamp uh, towards the sensor, uh, kind of keeping the the light Being cone on, on the sensor, on the sensor. Right? But yeah. now, but you need some light on the floor as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. <laughs> Great. Cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, oops. Um, so, do you still, did you, well, first, did you get the, the C64 Mini? Nope. I still have my old one. <laughs> really? Does it still work? <laughs> Actually, I haven't turned it on for maybe 10 years or something, but I actually, oh. I still have it. So maybe. <laughs> but but I have, I've tried some of uh, the old games uh, on it. I'm, I, I've stopped doing that because they don't it's kind of up. not, they don't hold up really. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just a memory. <laughs> yeah. That's unfortunately the case with a lot of uh, retro, I guess is the term games. I collect old consoles and uh, I've got like 20 over here, but it's really difficult playing them now because, at, you know, modern game design and game limitations are so, uh, I don't know, rough. <laughs> it gets we, uh, we enjoy playing games together and, and like hiring each other to, to find new titles and I'm myself a big Nintendo fan. so. A couple of weeks ago, I showcased the uh, Super Metroid to the other guys. They hadn't played it before, and they were kind of blown away by the fact that you could have such an old game, but with such atmosphere and like level design. And yeah, it's just a really nice game for, yeah. for the Super Nintendo. Metroid is a, uh, yes, uh, like specifically problem. Super Metroid. Um, like manager, the original Metroid's a little rough because yes. it's, you know, it's so limited and it's, you know, because it's on the NES, but. Um, Super Metroid is really where I think that whole genre, you know, Metroidvania hit its stride. Um, were there any games like that you guys were playing in the office that you, you know, you would like get overly competitive about? Or <laughs> yes, we play a lot of uh, Towerfall. Towerfall, okay, nice. And uh, uh, we actually started playing that on the Ouya back in 2004. Oh my god! <laughs> and so we are the first movers with that game, and we then we moved to uh, PlayStation and then to PC, and I have on the Switch as well. So we have it on all places. The fact that you guys actually had an Ouya is. I was uh, one of the initial Kickstarter backers. <laughs> what do you do with it now? Uh, I think I have it in a box somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I actually uh, I got to publish a couple of uh, game jam games on it, so that was a fun experience as well. It was nice. kind of the first time I saw my own games on a TV and on a console like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that's cool. That like, I mean, that they 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 get, definitely gave some shine to smaller or smaller developers. It just kind of sucks that it went yeah. the way it did. <laughs> Yeah, it was not a. There was so many problems with it, and the controller was so bad. The latency and the stall front. There were like it was a really nice concept, but the delivery was not as good as it should have been. I think I just soft locked myself. Uh oh. Yeah, um, but you can just. <laughs> Great. That 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 we know, and we we couldn't figure out a way to to prevent that. So you just have to kill yourself. Oh. <laughs> no. You sound like my dad. So, <laughs> um, okay, I think we have a question. Hang on, I gotta scroll back through the chat. Um, they want to hear more about transitioning a storyline into audio in a game. 
specific. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very broad question. <laughs> yeah, it's extremely broad. Tell me more. Mm. I don't know what that entails. Yeah, but uh, the funny thing is that it actually happened in the same time. Everything, yeah. uh, both story and and sound, and we were we were working so close together that that we get the feedback right away. Uh, so yeah, you sit next to the narrative designer, yeah. so it's kind of like you just talk. Yeah, like we, a normal we just conversation talk about and... it, and and when I make the the music, uh, the days I'm home and make music, and then I come back and and I get feedback right away and and that's kind of the way to that we've made a style for the game uh, yeah. because we've always been I've been tr sometimes I've went too far in one direction and then I just uh, needed a small bump to get in place again and uh, course correction <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I remember there was one uh, piece of music where you had war drums in it, and we just said, no, 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 it doesn't work. Take them out. <laughs> and, and that's that's oh, too God. much. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I can't imagine that that would bode well in a game like this. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was uh, the early stage, so we, we, we didn't yeah. know what... Uh, <laughs> so. We also had a lot of fun with uh, doing trailers, because like he would do the music, and I would uh, make the, the editing of the trailer, and we were kind of like say okay let's let's cut to this uh, beat and uh, then you would uh, i would start making some some drafts with some placeholder music and you could kind of like put yours in afterwards and and it was just a fun experience going back and forth yeah that's awesome um did you so like how many how many how big is your team currently uh we are uh, six people uh, oh, but wow. we have had help from people who have done some technical stuff on the shadows we have also have had help from the other uh, writers who have helped making the dialogue and and the story more sharp mm. we've had help from um, a guy who has been doing a theater work and like he helped directing the story and the the voiceover so him uh, he is a very he's a very good friend of our voice actor david bateson so they would kind of like uh, direct him uh yeah that worked really really well that, that that when we when we recorded david that that thomas was there also yeah so nice cool that sounds um i mean it sounds difficult composing or compose, uh, making a game with only six people but i guess it helps that you can do sound design composing audio programming all that stuff yeah. in <laughs> one I, I think we all have multiple heads so for example, I'm, I do the programming, but I also do the promotion as the producer, and I mm -hmm. kind of do the project management and all that. And and Ulrik, he, you are the audio designer, but you also made puzzles and mm -hmm. like programming the systems. And yeah, we we do a lot, all of us. Journalist. Yeah, it's it's always yeah, and, and that's necessary when we are when when we are so few people. Yeah, so. it's such a small team. It's yeah. interesting hearing about like indie so indie devs with such small you know small studios because you don't like you don't have the resources of tri of triple a studios but you still come out with games that could pass for like could you know could pass for triple a adjacent at least um yeah and it's something like we we don't really see this because we see it as a small game that we we did our best but it's just it's just our a little game but right. when people see it they 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 compare to what some of the bigger games and in the beginning, it was really um, scary when people said this is like Portal, but now people say it's like Portal in a good way because they kind of miss those type of games. So yeah. it's of course we we are not Valve and we don't have to, but we still found something with this game that that people really enjoy. Yeah, it's um, I mean, yeah, you're not Valve, but still it it, it being able to like be a spiritual successor to something is is sometimes i don't know if it's necessarily better but it's like you have more freedom sort of um so did you how has the response been to light matter really good like we are blown away by all the positive feedback both from critics but especially from users like on steam and on discord and people just writing that this is a, a really cool game they enjoyed it and some people say it also 
um, spark their interest in the puzzle genre. And that's yeah. really nice for us to, to hear. Yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, it's it's very reminiscent of those of, of those games that you were talking about a second ago. It, and it's definitely a genre that isn't uh, commonly thought of, I guess, but it's also like oversaturated with, you know, puzzle games, you know, like your, yeah. your Candy Crush and all that stuff. Exactly, um, yeah. yeah. And we have a lot of people who uh, join our Discord just to, to tell us that they enjoyed the game. And that direct uh, communication between developer and players is just something we really enjoy because we we just feel like, yeah, we just made a game because we thought it was fun. And, uh, <laughs> and it's not like we are experts in anything. We didn't know anything about puzzle design or, or whatever. Before we started this project, we had to learn it and we had to ask a lot of people for help. So it's just nice to be able to give a little back. And, and that's also why we uh, recorded the developer commentaries where people can hear about the, the development process. Yeah, that's, um, I'm definitely gonna check those out after this as well. <laughs> There's about four hours of content, so. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll have something to do when I, while I'm quarantined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting that I can't go outside and I hate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, same here. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's been an hour and a half, so I th think we're going to call it there. I really want to thank you guys again for coming out and hanging out with me, um, talking about Light Matter. Uh, did you guys have any anything you wanted to plug before we finish up? Anything you wanted to mention? I think it's it's it has been really nice talking yeah, to you. So. It has, and, and you just reached a level that is complicated ones that we ourselves have problems with solving so so good luck, <laughs> so good don't, luck. Don't, feel, don't feel too bad <laughs> yeah okay it's nice just to to get some like you have had a hard time getting people to talk about audio especially crypto so it's i guess it's nice to get it out there now yeah give it a little shine um yeah we definitely we're trying to you know it's a hard time right now but we we do offer a game audio program and we're the only school on the west coast of america that has like a wise certification program so we think it's pretty important to get people in you know interest you know that's why we're doing this on twitch to try and get people who watch twitch the younger people interested in game audio as just like a concept more than you know only like not paying attention to it while they're you know while they're playing yeah. And if, if you want to learn more about the game or the, the audio design and stuff like that, you can always join the Discord, or the Light Matter Discord, and just ask those questions. Yeah. We, we love getting that. I'm doing that right now. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, uh, Gustav, Ulrich, I really appreciate you guys sticking around, um, especially since it's so late over there. Um, <laughs> stay, uh, stay safe. Wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Yeah, see you. Bye. Bye. Sorry, I thought I stopped the stream. <laughs> okay. Um, bye. <laughs> I'm dumb. Uh, thank you guys for coming, as always. We offer game classes. 
go to them. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye-bye.